Has your life taken a turn? Do troubles beset you? Has fortune left you behind? If so, the Sierra Madre Casino, in all its glory, is inviting you to begin again. Come to a place where wealth, excitement, and intrigue await around every corner. Stroll along the winding streets of our beautiful resort. Make new friends, or rekindle old flames. Let your eyes take in the luxurious expanse of the open desert, under clear, starlit skies. Gaze straight on into the sunset from our villa rooftops. Countless diversions await. Gamble in our casino, take in the theater, or stay in one of our exclusive executive suites that will shelter you and cater to your every whim. So if life's worries have weighed you down, if you need an escape from your troubles, or if you just need an opportunity to begin again, join us. Let go and leave the world behind at the Sierra Madre Grand Opening this October. You know what? That sounds very lovely. You know, after the weird wackadoo bullshit that was last video, and how I pretty much botched the entire uh, president's speech. You know what? I could totally use a break. I could use a break from the whole Legion raids. I could use a break from the whole war. And you know what? I could use a break from the Mojave itself. I've been spending way too much time out here. So you know what? A nice little vacation, yeah, it might perk things up. But anyways, hey everybody, TBG Hunter here, and welcome back to more Fallout New Vegas. Last time, we went on over to the fort, which is over there, and we killed Caesar. Uh, then we came back to the... What's it around here? Yeah, it was. Uh, we came back to Forlorn Hope, and we helped deal with the situation where the chief of the rangers was misleading the NCR to try and protect people in a certain way, by misleading them and trying to get them to pull out safely instead of just getting themselves killed. And we also inadvertently saved the president's life. I still don't know how that happened. But whatever. Today, we're going to be do going and doing a little bit of adventuring. We're going to be heading down to the, if I can pull up my map, uh, the Abandoned Brotherhood of Steel Bunker, because we are going to be starting the first of the four DLC in this game. Now, the sad thing is, I actually was trying to see if I could get a few extra voices to accompany me for this little trip, but sadly, scheduling got in the way, and this is coming out like a week or two later than I originally planned because, well, if you see my Twitter, you'll understand why I have been a little waning when it came to doing a recording. So, with that said, let's head on into the Brotherhood of Steel Bunker. Oh, it's it. Very, uh, very cozy. There's a equipment case. Now, before I go any further, I will say this right here and right now. And this kind of uh, goes in with the other DLC, but it really, really needs to be addressed when you're going into dead money. You want to travel light. I brought the Hyperia with me just in case something decided to jump me on my little trip here. It was a nice, like, little light weapon I could bring it with me. I did. I dumped all my heavy stuff back at the uh, the Lucky Thirty Eight. I still had that missing laser pistol, which I probably should have just brought with me because it's. I still can't drop the damn thing because Torres is still in a little hidey hole. Uh, but as you can see, uh, everything that isn't like a quest related item it has been dropped off, and I just decided to go in light. As I'm gonna say right now, you want to go in light when you're going into. Uh, this DLC, especially this one in particular. So with that said, let's open the door and let's go on an adventure. Dead Money takes you into an extremely dangerous area of the Mojave Wasteland. The one-way journey until you finish your business in the Sierra Madre is finished. In normal mode, you'll encounter new traps, enemies, and new companions whose lives are tied to yours. In hardcore mode, you'll be fighting the environment as well, a toxic city that erodes health over time. Companions are more vulnerable, and so are you. Dead Money is recommended for experienced couriers, level 20 and up. If you're up to the challenge, continue on. The Sierra, Ma Sierra Madre Grand Opening awaits, and has been for 200 years. I can't wait for an adventure. 
Oh, this is very lovely. Nice and nice and clean. Okay, as soon as I say nice and clean, the entire area over there is completely caved in. You know what? You know, I could I could go for a little bit of an adventure outside the Mojave. You know, a little adventure away from the ward. Oh! Oh, God! Oh! Too smelly! Too smelly! Eee. You've heard of the Sierra Madre Casino. We all have. The legend, the curses, foolishness about it lying in the middle of the city of the dead, buried beneath a blood-red cloud, a bright, shining monument luring treasure hunters to their doom. The world's most famous stars and entertainers were invited to its grand opening. An invitation was a sign of exclusiveness the opening was supposed to symbolize a road to a brighter future not just for the world but for all who came to its doors a chance for anyone to begin again except the sierra madre never opened the war froze it in time like a big flash bulb going off the grand opening one big ending of humanity. It's still out there, in the wastes, preserved, just waiting for someone to crack it open. But getting to it, that's not the hard part. It's letting go. Ugh, what smells like armpits, desperation, and rotten eggs? Are you listening? Good. From now on, when I talk, listen, and follow my instructions. Play stupid. Play clever. Make the mistake of saying no. That collar on your neck will go off and take your head with it. Collar? What are you talking about? It's like that fit boy on your wrist. Except filled with explosives. A little radio of the old world. Just needed some tune. Do what I say, and the caller will go off. Refuse, try and run, disobey me, I'll kill you and find someone else. There's no escape from here until I let you go. The sooner you accept your situation, the better. All right, well, what do you want? That structure you see above the fountain. The Sierra Madre Casino. You need to break inside. Ah, uh, heist. Too many years in the making. But to get inside, avoid its traps. You'll need to gather a team. As I found, one cannot do it alone. So, I need others to pull off this heist. Who exactly? Around the villa are three other callers like yours. Caller 8, 12, and 14. Find all three and get them here to the phone. Then we'll talk to them. And should you get any ideas about killing each other and taking the treasure of the Sierra Madre for yourself, a warning. All your callers are linked. One of you dies, you all die. If that's what it takes to make you cooperate, so be it. Uh, why would you do that? Because in some respects, breaking into the Sierra Madre is easier than breaking the human instinct. Greed. The villa is filled with corpses. Some killed by the dangers here, some by me. Others turned on each other. Once they realized the Sierra Madre could be theirs, they cared nothing for their freedom, their survival, or each other. Are they all dead? 
The ones brought here live on only in what they've left behind. Their marks, graffiti on the walls, and victims they've killed. Some tried to help, left supplies and healing for others who came. Their reward, they were tracked down, killed by others with baser instincts. Some of these murderers went as far as to leave traps behind them, turning markers for help into death traps for anyone following them. It killed some of them when they forgot where the traps were, or when they desperately needed the assistance they had cut others off from. How many of these victims have you brought here? Too many, many. This place is dangerous. And its quarantine measures, its hazards, have claimed many failures upon failures. You think I wanted to place collars on you to ensure compliance? No. If robots could have done this, I would have sent them. The Sierra Madre is a complicated lock. Cracking it open requires human hands. And where's my gear? The Sierra Madre has many defenses, means of screening guests for illicit or dangerous items. Your arrival here, weaponless, was not my intention. The casino, this villa, it takes anything with even a trace of radioactivity, traces of unknown substances, and returns it home, the bunker. The process is automated, and the casino itself has other similar services. I was unable to find a workaround except to send others in as tools. Still, I have not left you defenseless. And the Sierra Madre's security, in some respects, can help you if you are resourceful enough. But we're not in the casino, so how could the casino's automated system track that I had radioactive weapons, even though none of my weapons are radioactive? Ah, oh, my brain hurts! What do you mean? This place is well preserved. Few who came here ever returned. All of the treasures of the old world lie scattered about, virtually untouched. Search, hunt, craft what you can from what you find. The trash of the pre-war era can keep you alive. Food, knives, more. Use them. Even the villa's toxic. And the residue it leaves behind can be shaped into tools and weapons. Gather it as well. Also, there is one more thing in your possession. A rifle that will keep you alive. As surely as the caller will. What is this rifle? It is a hollow rifle. A weapon I constructed when I arrived. I have since made superior models and modifications. For now, that tool will have to do until you find other weapons. And I suggest you do. The hollow rifle's ammo is limited. Still, it should serve well enough. I fashioned it from the holograms of the villa and used it against the villa's living inhabitants. The inhabitants? There are people still alive here? Yes, the inhabitants. Avoid them if you can. They are difficult to kill. Whatever has created them, bullets, Explosions, energy, it can make them inert for a time, then they seem to crawl back up, restored. Perhaps it's the cloud. Perhaps something in their physiology. What is this cloud, exactly? The cloud is what blankets the sky here. You may smell it in the air, copper and sulfur. Burns the lungs and seeps into the skin. As for its origins, I'm not certain. Pre-war industrial pollutants. Something in the Sierra Madre structure. It is unique across the wasteland. And deadly. It has kept this place preserved since the Great War. Will exposure kill me? The air here is lethal only if you enter concentrated pockets of the cloud. Too long inside one, you'll die. So be careful where you step. I've seen some survive concentration of the cloud for short periods of time, if healthy enough. Others were too weak. Rebreathers, chemical suits, there is no protection against it. It decays all the touches. I found fighting it useless. Is there any other place is there any safe places to rest at least? Anywhere sheltered from the cloud. 
inside buildings, tunnels, any place not exposed to the outside air. Anything the cloud has touched has preserved it one way or another. But only the holograms in the villa truly remain. What holograms are you talking about? Ghosts. They fill the villa. More in the casino. Much more. They carry out the functions the dead once did. They cannot be harmed. They only perform the same rote tasks until their power dies. They are of no consequence, except for the security holograms, the ones with the silhouettes of the armored Sierra Madre guards. Why? Most holograms perform specific functions. The security holograms, ever since the bombs fell, now perform their function. They will kill anyone they detect. They are immune to guns, weapons, EMPs, even energy weapons. Still, they have limitations. Their design limits their field of view, enough to avoid detection. Each has an emitter, destroy or disable it, and they cease to be a threat. Still, at least they still work as intended. Other technology here is more of a threat to you. Notably, the villa's radios and speakers. The radios and speakers? Yes, music was intended to be broadcast all over the villa. Over time, however, the radio signal has decayed and emits a different frequency. Speakers and radios interfere with the bomb caller frequency and can trigger the detonators prematurely. Hmm. It is an unfortunate side effect, one I did not anticipate. I was unable to calibrate the callers to block the signals. So, you'll have to make do. Oh, lucky me. So they can set off my caller. Yes, but not immediately. You'll hear a beep from your caller's detonator. When you do, step back, scan the area, and find the signal source. There are damaged speakers and shielded ones. The damaged ones you can destroy at range. Don't get close. You can't switch them off like a radio. The damaged speakers are sparking. Hard to miss. The casings are resistant to vandalism. Punching or hitting them will not destroy them. So how do I destroy these speakers, then? Gunshots, energy blasts, even spears thrown with great force can puncture their exterior. Shielded speakers can't be destroyed at all. You will need to avoid them or switch them off via a terminal. I'll leave the method up to you. Alright, well, I had a few more questions. I am short on patience, and you are short on time. How did I even get here? I brought you here. There are mechanisms in place once the traps across the Mojave are sprung. For now, your sole focus should be the Sierra Madre and how to get inside. Until then, you won't leave alive. Alright. Any other things? Uh, vision blurry. Uh, where exactly am I? This doesn't look like the Mojave. Unfamiliar with the legend of the Sierra Madre? The casino exists. You are one of the few who look upon it. Where you're standing is the villa beneath the casino above. The wreckage. The villa. Lies in the shadow. The villa is a dumping ground of failed construction. Pre-war junk that is aged poorly. Yeah. Nope, nope, I didn't want to talk about the speakers, uh... Yes! Um, excuse me. Gun. A few more questions. Uh, why is my visual, vision all blurry? Well, probably the fact that you stole my glasses. It is the cloud that surrounds the villa. It shouldn't prove lethal in the time you were here. Prolonged exposure would be hazardous, however. Fall asleep. And you will not wake up. Nice. Good to know. All right, so I'll find the other three with the bomb colors and bring them back here. I downloaded the instructions and markers on your pip boy in case you forget. And yes, I have access to that device on your wrist. Get the other three here after that. I'll have more instructions for you. Do this. I'll let you go. I'll let all of you go. 
You seem like a very trusting kind of guy. How am I supposed to find them? Your piece of Rocco trash will help you, I've ensured it. It can latch onto the signal of the callers. And tune into their frequencies. The bomb callers come with radios embedded in them. You can eavesdrop easily. It was part of their design to listen in. They can even screen out white noise from the environment to allow greater monitoring. All right, so who exactly am I getting? One is a trusted ally. Obedient, caller or no, although the caller helps. The other two, well, we'll have to see what the trap's caught. Any suggestions on who I should get first? Yes. Caller 8, the FEV reject, the super mutant. He's docile, predictable, and provided he's not starving, should be easy to command. I lost contact with him some time ago. Probably after he dragged you here from the trap. Find him. He'll follow you, caller or no. Alright, so where can I find him? Travel west toward the Villa Police Station. Follow the radio frequency and the alarms. Although, there's a great deal of interference at the source. Perhaps that's why I lost contact with him. No matter. Aside from Caller 8, there should be weapons, armor, at the police station. Go west. Avoid the villa inhabitants. Bring the mutants back. Alright. Not like I have much of a choice. Good. If necessary, I will guide you through the villa's broadcast systems. If you get lost, return here, and I'll direct you. I've downloaded instructions on an audio log to your Pip-Boy in case you can't read. If you forget why you're here, let my voice remind you. Oh, that was that was a bad character let model uh, bleeding. So yes, welcome to Dead Money, and this is possibly going to be an unpopular opinion. I hate this DLC. Now, I can, I can, I respect what Obsidian was trying to do with this. You know, it was kind of take a different spin on Fallout, and you know, kind of present it as a pseudo survival horror. Uh, we still got our missing laser pistols, so you know what, I'll track that into my pistol section. Uh, we got this hollow rifle, which uses microfusion cells, and it, it's an energy weapon, so yeah, you know what, I'll put in number five. Uh, we also got my camera, which has a whole lot of use in this DLC. Uh, we got the collar, which self-explanatory. Uh, the jumpsuit and the rebreather. You know what? I will equip the rebreather because even though it said it would not filter out the toxicity of the cloud, it provides a little bit more of a damage threshold, so any little bit will always be helpful. Oh god, I'm already seeing enemies on the radar. That is not a good sign. So, I don't like this DLC as much as the other ones. I kind of find it to be one of the weaker DLCs. Huh. Is an unusual looking crafting station. As you approach it, lines of tiny holographic items appear on the dispensing tray. Wireframe schematics and lists of consumable consumables the machine can assemble and package in for the consumer. There's a slot in which the Sierra Madre symbol. The slot does not look part of the original design. So yes, these uh, little vending machines here are pretty much. Uh, I guess you could say they're like. Fallout's version of 3D printers, but they, you have to pay them through uh, uh, ch chips. And as we go on through our adventure, we will come across a few weapon mods for some of the weapons in the DLC provides us. So, yeah, there's a good number of uh, casino chips right here, I think. No, that's just a playing card. Uh, there's actually an unmarked quest to get all the playing cards here. I'm not going to go for it just because it's not really that valuable. I will get the chips, though, because the chips are, like, the main form of currency in the DLC. So, we're going to need to get every little bit to survive. And, while I was commendable that they tried to, you know, give it a sort of a pseudo-survival horror aspect... There, there it just feels kind of lacking in something. I like the story, but... The gameplay-wise, yeah, I'm not really the biggest fan of it. Treasure's mine, assholes. Um, 
Well, you know what? Before we continue on, why don't we take a listen to the other callers and see what we have to wait in waiting for us? Hmm, riveting. That one's got a hit on their shoulders. For now. You'd think it was spring, the way tourists keep rolling in. Should never have set that radio signal on repeat. Hope that tourist is hurrying, haven't got all day. So hungry. Please let me out. Great, and that's my first target to go recruit. Lovely. Now, the other reason I I kind of commend this DLC is because it kind of scares me at times. Like, for what it is, uh, it's a trap-filled nightmarish whorehouse that you need to be very careful with the enemies around here. To a point. Uh, the enemies here, which were possibly going to be coming across really soon are pretty dangerous and the fact that I think I don't even have any healing items yeah I only have the NCR emergency radio you're left in a pretty vulnerable state at the beginning is there anything of value here you really do need to like uh, scavenge and scrounge for any little bit of health ammo and all that stuff Ooh, a gun, gun cabinet and a laser pistol nice I even though I got the missing laser pistol Actually, is the missing laser pistol stronger or weaker than a normal one? Let's see, damage six. The missing laser pistol is actually stronger. You know what? I I will repair that. Find me and we can talk. I don't know who wrote that, so I don't know who to find. Ooh, chips. And whiskey. I'm going to need to get drunk off my ass if I'm going to have to survive this thing. But, yeah. This DLC, uh, as much as I harp on it, I'm not going to spend the entire DLC bitching about it. A knife spear. I'll take that. And a stim pack. Um, because there are some good aspects to it. But we'll cross that bridge Watch when we get to it. The villain inhabitants. They're difficult to kill unless you chop them apart. If you can, blow them up or disintegrate them. Oh, man, look at that guy. You know what? I'm going to get this spear. He said that it's only good to chop him apart just in case. See how close we can get without him noticing us. What the hell is he doing? Is he, like, digging a hole or something? Oh, yeah. Work it. Work it. Come on. You can do it. All right, let's... Let's take care of this guy. Meet the ghost people. Ghost harvester to be exact. The best way I can describe them are intelligent zombies. Uh, they will not die unless you sever a limb. Unless, well, there's a particular perk in this uh, DLC that we can get relatively quick if we can get to the police station. Where there will be um t actually no they will just always die unless they're killed but there's a chance of having a higher chance of their limbs blown apart uh what's this say the casino is the old man's collar let's see oh hologram it's a person all right um but the perk that I'm going to gun for which is actually one of the uh, companion perks that this DLC provides uh, makes it so that if you kill them with a like a conventional weapon you don't have to uh, uh, chop their limb off they'll still die but it's like a somewhat rare chance to get so besides I have bloody mess and bloody mess makes the killing these guys a bit easier as you saw back earlier with that one guy I just want to scrounge around a little bit. This place is actually a bit of a maze, as you can tell. 
I mean, there, there's ghost people scavenging all over the place. There's some rad roaches over there. I'm not going to deal with them. You know what? I think we should probably go get our companion first and foremost before we decide to go even further into the villa. The police station is right over there, I believe. And I'm going to just grab the last of these chips. Come on. There we go. And who knows? Damn it, that bell always freaks me out. It's like, is there a train coming or what? And it's just... I always figured that was, like, the ghost people, like, alerting because they're actually quite intelligent and the backstory be to these guys is kind of tragic, I will say. I'll, I'll get further into it as we go further into the DLC and I'll have something to talk about. But we've arrived at the police station, so let's head on in and see where that one guy is. He said it was a super mutant, which I kind of find a little funny that... A super mutant dragged me all the way here. Uh oh. All right, he's just repeating himself. Uh, I find it funny that a super mutant dragged me all the way from the Brotherhood of Steel bunker to wherever the hell this place is, because it's literally spitting distance away from Forlorn Hope. All right, so where is the speaker at? Oh, okay. It beeps somewhere over there, which means that's probably where the speaker is. I hate the speakers in this DLC. This is one of the major, like, gripes I have is the the, the amount of speakers that are in here. Oh, some glasses, finally. And a police pistol, which is nice. I have a nice little ballistic weapon, and I don't have to waste my... Uh, very valuable microfusion cells. I put the pistol right over there. Uh, terminal. Sinclair's visit. Sinclair did the rounds again today. Glad he left us, left us his ghostly entourage at the casino. Those walking light shows make me wonder why he's even got us that, got us on staff when they could blast us in a second. Otherwise, Sinclair runs a tight ship. Good to see that these days and times. Don't know how smart he is in trying to make the resort to escape everything in the outside world, but rich guys can make it happen, even the ones that they've been hit hard like Sinclair has. Interesting. Holding cell. Nothing much to report. Pretty quiet tonight, even from... Puesta del Sol, I guess that's how you would say it. Uh, imagine Morales is coming to the casino. Probably has more than enough time with the guests coming tonight. Poor bastard. Set up the radio so I can listen in on the gala event when it fires up and left left one out for the prisoners. If Sinclair doesn't want us to be too strict with the guests tonight, I might just toss the key into the holding cage with anyone who we pick up and let them unlock the door when they sleep it off. Set the radio rooms downstairs to broadcast through the speakers. Don't want to miss tonight's performance. The receiver down there is stronger than the desk radios we have up here. Stash some supplies from the evidence room way down room down there to celebrate once my shift is over. What? Why? Way I figure it, the rest of the guards will be too busy to check up on me. So we get an idea of where some of the radios are. Alright, uh, what's inside this desk? Some more glasses. I'll switch over to my pistol just so I don't have to waste this. Now, here is another, like, little thing that uh, dead money has to provide is these secret stashes these contain just a random assortment of weapons ammo perks and all that stuff uh, sometimes you'll find health and all that stuff mostly it's just weapons and ammo it's not really that great usually it's like nine millimeter pistols and all that stuff so just stuff you can burn through to kill radios and stuff let's see anything in this terminal inventory got the weapons at, at and the mines in today, along with the shotguns and the ammo, enough to defend the villa if trouble breaks out. Sinclair is taking the world situation seriously, even all the way out here. Maybe more so because we're here. Hate to think someone got their hands on half the stuff we stored here. In enough military ordnance here to turn the villa into a minefield. Dispensers are up and running. Unlike most everything else, we have a few problems with them. Heard they've been part of some World Fairs exhibit Sinclair had seen, so he can contacted the researchers 
Researchers about the dispensers to see if they could use more here. Turns out dispensers do more than supply convenience items. If there's an emergency or a threat of communist attack, codes can unlock ammo and repair kits for the dispensers. Stored back up to the codes in the contraband room just in case. All right, so we got an idea where some of the codes are for the dispensers, so we'll want to pay you that contraband room a visit. Oh, what do we got here? Got some armor. That's nice. I got a locked locker. Maybe there's something of value in it. Maybe some C4 and a detonator. So nothing really of value. But I will put on that armor. Where is the Sierra Madre armor? 16 damage threshold. I look a little less ridiculous now. Kind of works with the rebreather and stuff. And a helmet. Nice. Anything else? Nope. All right. Well, let's put that helmet on. Eh, I can't see any- with the blast plate down, I can't see anything! Uh, reloading bench, nice, and some magnum ammo for my pistol. Can I make anything? No, I can't. Figures. I can never make anything on these things. Horses, jar of cloud residue. I'll take everything just in case. Uh, what would I need to make some simple, like, ammo? Casings, lead, powder pistol, large pistol, yeah. Nothing I have on me right now. This is another bathroom. Yep. All right. So back out into the main area. Beep, 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 beep. <sighs> Good. I think that was the radio that was back here. Nope. There's another radio. I'm guessing that's probably downstairs and it's emitting through the floors. Anything in the holding cells? There's a spooky, scary skeleton. Uh, there's another spooky, scary skeleton. This guy didn't have the right lock picking for us. A Levantoma, good, I guess. Binoculars, I don't know why he has binoculars in a prison cell. Anything? Ooh. Uh... All this stuff, I will take it. Anything to get me a little pick-me-up. Anything that you can find that looks valuable, take it. That's my, like, go-to advice for dead money. Alright, let's head on downstairs and see if we can find this radio. Oh, just the basement, so I guess I the radio's probably in one of the other rooms back you there. You would come below the cage. Letters I scratched on the villa walls. A little farther. Follow my voice. That's it. The one in the cage? Dog. I had to lock him up. He keeps disobeying me. Uh oh. I need some vending machine installation, search and seizure, no more parking tickets. Nope, nothing of value. Radio in here somewhere. I can hear it. Eh, not gonna mess with it. It's not worth my head. Anything? Vacuum cleaner. Tools. Blue. I wish I could find a workbench so I could see what things I could make. I think there might have been a workbench back at, like, the, the main fountain hub area. Uh, this is a tin can. I thought there was, like, something of value there. Is there anything in the filing cabinet? More chips? Oh, what was that? No, that was just garbage. Mm. I don't like the looks of this. Uh oh. Ooh. That's me there on the table. The disc. My voice. It's the damn radio. Can't take any chances, though. You may be some victim who simply stumbled uh, was down that, here. That radio. If so, can't let you let dog out. No, not yet. If you're who I think you are. 
You came to fetch Dog. Use him to drag others here. Now I'll use you. And that Pip-Boy you're wearing. You're smart. Clever. The key to Dog's cage is simple. Take my voice to the cage above. Let me speak to the beast inside. Then you and I, we can talk. Hmm, here's our commands. From now on, when I talk to you, pay attention. I've left markers on your pit boy. Find the three other callers in town. Eight, twelve, and fourteen. Get them to the fountain. Obey me, and you can all go free. Dog, back in the cage. Dog, back in the cage. Hmm. Ah, great, I still have to deal with the radio up here. I have no idea where that thing would be. Nope, nope, nope. Oh, wait. Alright, there's a safe area right here. A uh, note that leads back out into the villa. I do not want to go back outside. Not yet. Ooh, what do we have here? A cosmic knife. Interesting. I'll take that hot plate just for reasons. Back, 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 back. Help. Oh, there you are. Phew! Police Chief's Terminal. Uh, I'm guessing that's just to unlock the... This must be the contraband room, and that needs a key. Well, I guess it's the terminal it is. Unorganized. Gee, I wonder what... That's kind of sad if, like, this... Yeah, go into the contraband room and the code for it is unorganized. That's kind of sad. Ooh, but what lovely things do we have? We got some grenades. I'll take, definitely. Scotch. Uh, oh, I'll take that Abrexo cleaner. Might be useful in the future. Super stim packs. We can get some magnum rounds from the vending machines. Anything else? Oh, wait, what was that? An automatic rifle. Hell yeah, I'll take that. I can always go for the heavy firepower. Then Tuts, the fresh maker. And uh, let's uh, equip some of the new things we got. Let's see. Um, I'm definitely going to equip those frag grenades. Uh, I'll put you right there. I'll fix the police pistol. Very nice spear. Don't really need that. Um, cosmic knife? Nah. You know, cosmic knife, you can replace the, the worthless camera and the um, automatic rifle. I'll put you right there. Hmm, not bad. You know, World War II weapon. Where's that? Mm, whatever. Let's take a look at this electric hot plate. So this is kind of a, another unique crafting system. I guess you could say it kind of works like the the um, the the campfires back in like the vanilla game. Uh, it, it is basically the campfires in the vanilla game. So we so yes, it, it is kind of funny because we can actually, if I could find the right stuff, we could make um, armor out of a hot plate. I find that to be hilarious. Uh, but we get to make some Cloud Kiss, which, why would you? It just drains your HP for 10 seconds. Uh, we can make Ghost Sight, which uh, basically just lets us see in the dark. So I'll make one of those just in case we go into a really dark area. I can always use the, the you know, the, the boost. And I'll take that Jar Cloud Residue. You know what? I will make another thing to Ghost Sight. Tin can. Thought I could actually use that, um, that, that, what looks to be a coffee maker. Uh, other than that, I guess I'll check the refrigerator, see if there's anything in purified water. I'll take it. Alright, let's go talk to our good friend Dog over here. 
Uh oh. Where's that radio at? It's not there. It's not that. Huh. Don't see a radio. It's one of those times I kind of wish I had Rex with me because his thing would make identifying these radios so much easier. This looks like a safe area. Let's play it at tape. I actually do kind of like that you actually have to play a tape in a certain area, in a certain, like, distance from a, the companion to actually, you know, do the thing. Where's the dog command tape? Dog. Oh my god, the miscellaneous. What have we here? You weren't who I was expecting. I'm disappointed. Still... Even if you aren't my intended guest, you take direction. Good. You can't have been an idiot to figure out how to release me from my cage. Or perhaps you are, with that leash on your arm, and the one around your neck. With our collars and manacles, why, we may as well be kin. Hey, that leash on my arm is an accessory. I will have no say against that. I'm the voice uh, what reason. happened to your voice? I sleep sometimes. Down in the basement. In the cage. Now that I'm awake, Dog goes back in the cage. Dog knows I'm here, but can't do anything about it. I'm his... conscience. Keep him tame. Keep him from hurting us. Doing foolish things. I've been trapped in here for some time. Then you come along and let me out. So, you opened my cage for a reason. Now, I want to know why. Hmm, so we can pass a science check or a medicine check. I'm looking for someone with a collar like mine. Where's your collar? I'm looking for someone with a collar. Wait, let's see. Some immune's brain damage usually result in fight. Full on That's stealthy the usage. easy explanation. The one humans use. Pre-war technology. As if it's the cause of all ills, mind and body. I needed to come out of the cage to protect Dog from clever humans like you do you see these wounds of his covering his skin the bear trap on his arm he placed his own hand in it the name he carved in his chest to remind him of who he is he inflicts pain on himself to silence me when all i try to do <sighs> he cuts hurts and tries to murder me out of him he won't succeed just makes me angrier dog is the beast we simply change cages like the ones here i was looking for someone with a collar like it's mine close. where is your collar Closer than i'd like dog's been into things needs to think before he eats chew before he swallows he's eager that way now the colors are part of me inside i can feel its electronic heartbeat clicking and burning down below like before it was cold and heavy before going in the cage now you're here and it's pulling and kicking again tugging like a leash Interesting. If the color inside you is active, really? I didn't switch it on. Yet it led you here, to me. And now you're here, and it's burning a hole in my guts. Maybe it's crying for its owner. How the hell did you, or whoever, eat one of those collars? 
When segmented, they look like nothing more than metallic rad scorpions. And if they're attached to neck flesh, warm, red, Dog doesn't care what's on the body he's crushing in his hands. He'll mangle it, twist it, make it fit until he's full. Dog can't help himself. Hungry, greedy. And now the collar's inside, alive again. And we're trapped here until it goes cold. Maybe you shouldn't go As around shoving old world choice. tech in your stomach. Sometimes instinct takes over, and that's when I go into the cage. It's like curiosity that way. After all, you wouldn't have put that collar on by choice. Perhaps it was your curiosity that caused that hand to close on your neck. Hey, listen, I, I got a message for a vacation. I wanted to take it. I should have known it was just a scam. I, I'm at fault for that. I need to get you out of here. Of Actually, I get more questions. You wouldn't have locked yourself in there the without some sort of key to Why let you it's out. The old man, the one who brought us here. I hid the key on me so Dog wouldn't know. I just need the old man to show up so he and I can talk. If Dog was in control when the old man appeared, well, he would just do whatever he commanded, as always. And I can't have that. If you have the key in there, the old man can order Dog to open the Dog cage. obeys, yes. Why? Do you have some means of contacting the old man? Uh, he's now my sort of boss. I can play his voice, yes. I have audio logs of him you on my pit boy. Don't play it. If you do, I'll find a way to get out of the cage. End you. I'll murder you. Crush your arms and legs until. I'm down. Follow no, me willingly, and won't. I won't do it. If you did, you won't escape this place alive. I'd shatter every one of your limbs to splinters and leave you here. You think I'm afraid of your collar exploding, killing us? No. I'll leave you breathing, then keep walking until my collar goes cold. I'll prop your broken body in view of the Sierra Madre so you can see what you came to steal. Forever out of reach as you die. I can't convince you I'm not here for the Sierra Madre prove or the it. old man, so I'll prove How? it. Words are worthless. Oh, that's something I've been told many times in my life. If I had the power to let Dog out of his cage, I'm going to prove it by not doing it. No. No, you're not. Even though Dog's more docile, easier to control, you may regret this. This place, this place is where creatures like Dog can survive. The people that fill its streets. He is as vicious, more vicious than them. His hunger can help you more than I can. When I am in control, this shell is difficult to fight in. The what do you inhabitants mean? of the villa they are difficult to kill. They need to be chopped apart, hacked on the ground, disintegrated if you can. They are difficult to kill, but not to devour. And Dog is always hungry. If he is with you when they fall, he will fall on them, end them. If I am with you, fighting will be far more difficult. Even if Dog is more helpful, we can manage. <laughs> I am not sure you belong here. No, you don't belong here. Yet, you came this far. And I'm not interested in remaining here any longer. I'll unlock the cage. 
Very well. All right, let's Lead get out of here. God has given you the In My Footsteps perk. This perk grants you bonus stealth as well as the ability to step lightly around police traps. So yes, we were just indeed talking to God. And hey, we leveled up. And now we can finally put some stuff into the perks and stuff and I can finally get that one perk that I really need for this DLC. Alright, so energy weapons went up to 65, melee went up to 50, and I just put the last two of the uh, little skill points in the medicine just so that I can get every little bit of drop out of that, that their um, food and stuff. So that's what I'm going to go with. And in doing so, let's head on down. First things first, see if there's anything new level 36. Actually, yes. Uh, broad Daylight. You're so sneaky that you can sneak even when your Pip-Boy light is on. Anytime your Pip-Boy light is on, you gain a sneak bonus to offset the light, the light sneak penalty. So that, that's kind of good if you're a stealth character, then this basically you can keep your Pip-Boy on and it doesn't like affect your stealth. But I'm not going to go for that. I am actually going to go for... where is it? No, seriously, where is it? Did I, did I miss something? Hmm. Oh, wait. Did I screw up? Oh, I don't see it. Huh. Okay, so evidently I might have already gotten that perk by the looks of things, so... I guess instead we're just going to get Concentrated Fire. With Concentrated Fire, your accuracy to hit any part of advance increases slightly. Ugh, I cannot talk. Slightly with each subsequent hit on that body part. So we'll get that. Oh, you're you're pretty small for a super mutant. It isn't the clever one. What do you want? Uh, what weapons God are you good at? better at the baser instincts than I. I merely... His sinew and muscle are difficult to move consciously. He's always hungry, clumsy, heavy. Hmm. I'm sure you... I switch back and forth All between voices. Is the right command. Whenever Dog hears the... His master giving orders, I go back in the cage. So that leash on your wrist... And the one on your neck. I won't truly be free to express myself until every trace of that voice is destroyed. Still, if you ever want to speak to me, bark my audio log at him. The one in the police station. That'll call me out. S why does that make him Dog go is away? afraid of me as long as the master isn't around. Why'd you put emphasis on the word the master before? Master Elijah reminds Dog of someone from long ago. His leader, commander, commanders. The master was a strong personality. Personalities as well. Dog is slavish, was conditioned to serve the master until death. The old man, Elijah, Merely came along and opened that door in Dog's mind. Now, Dog does whatever the old man wants. Sounds like it mad. makes you mad. Mad doesn't even begin to describe. There's not a word for the hate I feel inside. It's consuming. Twists every thought to red. After all that's laid ruin to the world. Again and again, I thought at last we could be free. Thought Dog could be free. No. No, the world's always got another cage. Waiting, keeping everything you want. Just out of reach. Why does Elijah make Dog do that anchors Gather you so them, much? Drag them here. Fetch, like an animal. And hurt them if they resist. 
dog doesn't even blink. Even hear their cries when he's twisted their arms full circle. Fragile things, screaming on the ground. To listen to him, commanding dog to hurt others. And dog just nods, eager and willing to serve. Can't do you anything. do anything? Me. Me, dog puts in the cage. Hurts himself to try and drown out my voice when all I want to do. Uh, uh, never mind. Useless. Finally had to start fighting back, screaming on my own. Had to take matters into my own hands. Lock dog up. You're trying to protect dog. Having Elijah control him, hurt him. You I've want to protect him. I've watched over dog for so long. Tried to stop him from hurting others, killing others. Quiet that mindless, howling instinct of his. He doesn't understand. He has the brain of a child. He knows when he does wrong. He just can't help himself. He's my care about him. Kin. Without him, I wouldn't exist. Maybe I was nothing more than his conscience, trying to rein him in. Useless. I... I just need him to show restraint. Let go of the needs, the hungers. Ease the burden. Just once, so I can have my thoughts to myself. Why can't you control him? stronger than me. Dog is stronger than me. He's just a child. He knows when he does wrong. He just can't help himself. I don't know when I first spoke, or when I first started thinking for myself. It was so long ago. I slept for a long time before. I want to believe I was the one in control once. I don't know anymore. Then Dog got a new master, a new voice. And I woke up to protect him. More. Don't push your luck. Uh, who's this old man who Don't brought us here? Stupid. I already have to mind one child. You must have figured it out by now. The old man obsessed with the Sierra Madre, riddled with greed. Hoped you might be him when I woke up. All you are is his hand. You're the same kind of greed. Followed the radio, the broadcast, and now you're here, all confused. Not for long. You'll figure it out. Will I, though? Will I? What do you say I'm you're the same as him? him? any more than I'm dog. But that collar around your neck, you're an extension of the old man's grasp. Clumsy, perhaps, but a tool, yes. And once you get acclimated to the Sierra Madre, then you'll feel the same overpowering hunger the old man does. And then you'll be him, not just his hand. I, I highly doubt it. I doubt I'm ever going to come back to this place once I'm done here. This old man, what do you know Elijah, about him? Human. Weak like all of you are. Feeling age circling him like starved dogs, howling for blood. To me, he reeks of age and failure. And madness. To me, he is simply the old man. To dog, he is master. His name, meaningless. Running out of years, hopes and dreams running through his withered hands like sand from the big empty. I'm scorched by the sun. Scorched the by the sun? Man, this Elijah tried to hold the sun in his hands. Arrogance was cast down for it. Icarus' crime was to fly too high. Elijah. Elijah wanted to bring the sun down to him. <laughs> Arrogance. So Heard what does the he do here? The Sierra Madre, just like you did. Exactly the same way. 
finds out it's more than a story, comes to this shining poisonous grail, this jewel of the desert. Dog knows him more than I do. Dog's always nodding, always obeying him, because he's weak and hungry and greedy for master's affection. So you're the one who knows of how I got to the I villa. Know. Even if I don't see it happen, down in the cage, I hear echoes of the footfalls, the click of the collars. Every time I see one of you, I know exactly how you got here. You couldn't help yourselves any more than Dog can help himself. You heard the voice, the promise, and then you walked right into one of the old man's traps. Then, then Dog comes for you, drags you here. Hey, listen, there was a waypoint. I had, like, a mission screen that popped up at the very beginning of this adventure. I already paid the money for this. I got I just wanted to get my money's worth. So you brought me, me here to the villa. You think I want to haul bodies around the wastes like a Brahmin at the whip? No. Dog does it. When the old man says fetch, dog fetches. You were in a man trap, and dog made his rounds and dragged you here. When, I don't know, but it must have been recent, before the cage. I don't Why do you say that? Now. That isn't surprising. What is, is that it was when Dog was out of his cage, free, hungry. He knows not to eat anything he catches in the traps. After that, however, so he dragged you here. You got spared. Dog must have fed after you arrived. Once he was fed, that allowed me out of the cage and put him inside. Do you remember how long you were out? Hey, listen, when I go to sleep, it could be days, weeks, months, who knows? I sleep like a rock. I don't remember. I only woke up after my pit boy went active. Must have already been in the cage. Already had the collar in me. You're lucky Dog didn't devour you. Otherwise, we'd be closer than we are now. I feel like we're, we're getting on a very emotional bond, More. God. Don't push your luck. God, I can't believe I just said those words. Alright, let's uh, see. We'll see. Uh, that's enough for now. Well, since God doesn't have any problem with it, why don't we bring Dog out and then make our way back to the plaza? So, to just do this, we just gotta have Elijah's voice anytime, any place. so let's Are play the prisoner commands. From now on. Remember you. You were mean to Dog. Make Dog sleep. And other voice come out. I have orders for you. Go and stay, you know, all that. Dog is listening. All right, so that, that's all that dog stuff. Uh, what equipment do you have, dog? You got nothing, of course. I figure you probably would have eaten something of value. No, 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 no. On second thought, I want you with me. I don't want to lose you just yet. Mm. Dog, right. remember you. You were. All right, so yes, yeah, dog. Um, yes, master. I have some questions for Dog. Can you tell me how you got to the Sierra Madre? Followed voice in air, then here. Here as long as can remember. Don't like this place. Hard to find things to eat sometimes. Better than the cage. Dog doesn't like being locked up. Voice in air didn't say anything about a cage and nothing to eat. Voice in the air? Many voices. One in air. The other one. And Master. Master is the nicest. Gets me mad sometimes. But lets Dog feed. Master was quiet for a long time until Dog heard him on your arm. Did you eat him? Dog gets hungry too. Being hungry makes the voice mad. Oh, you special little child, you. 
Uh, what can you tell me about the master? He takes care of dog. He tells dog what to do. Told dog to come here, put collars on people. Sometimes people fight. Dog holds them until they go quiet. Don't make any noise. If collars don't fit or go too quiet, find others for master. Master makes the other voice go away. Other voice hates master. Dog can feel it. Master's voice is like pain. Protects dog. Mm -hmm. Alright. Alright, dog. Let's go on an adventure. Yes, we lost God's footsteps. Dog is giving you the benefit of his ravenous hunger. Ghost people are difficult to kill unless dismembered or disintegrated. If dog is the, in the party, however, dog will devour them. Preventing them from getting back up. So, dog is... He, he's possibly one of the more, most useful companions in the DLC. Out of the ones that we get, I'd say he's probably the most useful because... Man, look at this. Look at this ghost trapper getting down. You see that funky walk he was doing? Oh, oh god, there's more of them. It was a trap! It was a trap all along! He kind of looks, looks like he's doing the, the footloose dance. He's a maniac, maniac. I know that's probably not food loose time. That's just what I know. Uh oh. He just woke back up. Dog eat him. Dog. No, I don't want special ammo. Remember hmm. you. Dog buddy. Uh, so yeah, the, the perk we're trying to get out of Dog, which is why I brought him out and put God back in the cage, so to speak, um, is the perk that allows me to kill these guys without having to dismember them. There's always like that possible chance, or I think it might have increased the chance, I don't remember. Dog was getting uh, you know what? Oh, uh, Ghost Trapper's getting it down again. Uh, dog? Go, dog! Punch him in the face! I don't think dog has any weapons you can give him. Uh, dog, where are you going? Dog? Always yell at dog. Yell at dog because gets hungry. Can't stop it. Always need more. Okay, well, if you're hungry, you can feel free to go eat them. I kind of want you to go eat them. Oh, God. Too heavy cloud residue. Oh, God, it smells so bad. So, the cloud, I might as well talk about. Uh, where there's heavy cloud residue will take damage over time, as you just saw. A good chunk of my health was just taken out from that heavy cloud. And I kind of forgot that. If I was playing in hardcore mode, my health would slowly be going down no matter where I am, unless I'm, like, inside a building or inside a house that doesn't have, like, the cloud stuff. So, this DLC is significantly harder in hardcore mode. It's probably the most challenging out of all the hardcore mode, like, changes. Uh, do I have any... I don't want to use any of those stim packs yet, so I guess I'll just have to stick with the water. Where'd the trapper go? Oh, there he is. Come on, I would like dog for you to eat him. Come on, eat him. Eat him! Damn it, dog! I just want you to eat these people. Alright, let's get back to the plaza. And the problem is, I don't know where, where the plaza was. Pretty no, it's right here. All glowing. Yeah, made back safe and sound. Alright, so I guess now who we got? 
Uh, we can go find Caller 14 or Caller, Caller 12. We can go to the Medical Clinic District or the Residential District. I think we're going to go for number 12. We'll just slowly make our way up the numbers. And Medical District goes back the way I came. So I think we'll try and at least uh, get to Christine and then we, we will um, we'll probably call it a video. That seems like a good place to end it off because we were we pretty much made a good no, stride of progress here. Age, poorly, I don't. Pre-war junk. The speakers emit a signal that'll set off your caller if you stay too long. Swallowed there are damaged bad. speakers and shield speakers. The damaged ones you can destroy at range. Don't get close. You can't switch them off like a radio. Well, good to know. There's some glowing out there. Is the the medical wing that we need to get to? Oh, hello. Uh, dog, your assistance is required. Run! Always yell at dog. Yell at dog because it's hungry. Can't stop it. Always need more. I know he's just unconscious. Oh nope, he's no longer unconscious. Dog, where are you? I would like you to eat him. Damn it. Or punch his head off. I guess that also works. Ugh, dog. You're killing me. Swallowed something bad. Uh oh. Tastes like burnt wires. I don't know where that radio is. Is there another route over here? Do I have to go head first into the madness? Head first into the madness it is. Back, 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 back. This is probably going to end horribly. Eh, that's horrible. Oh, there you are. I see you. There we go. Now we're safe. Oh, this isn't going to end well. Dog was following. Oh. Inside the cloud. Get to the second floor. Bad. Hello? Anyone here? Take the chips. I always feel like there's always gonna be a tripwire trap around here. Cause I think later in like later areas of the villa they actually do start putting tripwire traps around here. And over here, get that check because there's some ammo. Do you have special ammo? No, I don't have any special ammo for this. It would be too easy if I had special ammo for this. Hmm. So hungry. Did not make a wrong turn or something? You're so hungry, dog. There's some ghost people I would like you to eat. Please. Please. Let's see. Go back down here and let's. Did I miss something? Or oh no, wait. There. Here we go. Cash register. Let's take everything. And he's out cold. Good. There we go. Always yell at dog. Yell at dog because it's hungry. Then eat dog. Always need more. There are spooky ghost people all over the place. Just eat them. 
While you eat them, I'm gonna go over here and get the stash. This is actually one of the stashes I actually do remember a lot of. We should be getting close to the medical area. Great. Hope the voice doesn't come back. Bad. Nope. 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 Or is that one shielded? I think that's shielded. No, it's not. I forget how you can tell the difference between shielded and unshielded. I think like shielded has like a, like a grating over the lights of the speaker that that's to tell you that it has a shield over it. Snare, share and share like. Oh, well, you made it to the medical clinic, so there's that. Sadly, we won't get, didn't get medicine. dogs staying. Watch for security holograms. Dangerous. Don't shoot them. Attacking them is useless. Like oh, yeah, I forgot this is the part where stealth actually becomes mandatory because of the security holograms. Check security hologram status. Patrolling second floor. Use security posting. Security calls two four six. Uh, you know what? Let's br let's bring God back out. He will offer better sneaking. Dog, back in the cage. If it isn't the, we'll see. What is that chagrin you got there? I'm disguised as one of you guys. Does that count as me being in part of security? Of course it wouldn't. What was that? No, I think that's the shielded one. Maybe I'm tearing off your arm. Where are you going to be? Man, I just can't win if it's not God threatening to kill me all the time, or dog insatiable appetite and always hungry. Get the doctor's bag. Never know when I might break my leg from a two-foot drop. Oh, that's that's the hologram emitter. Emitter controls security holograms in this area. You may be able to disable the emitter. Hell yeah, I'll disable it. Doctor's bag. Nothing. And, oop, anything in the tool cabinet? A knife. Perfect. No security holograms here for now. The only security is me. Oh God. Well, I guess this is like some of the past people who were who Elijah brought here. Too well preserved to be like the old gas, the cloud residue. Ooh, an assassin suit. Oh, I look pretty spiffy in it, if I do say so myself. Surgical tubing, useless. Unless I want to make myself a doctor's bag, but that, that I find plenty. This was hardcore mode, and I definitely would be getting it for the doctor's bag. Ooh. Definitely want to get that. Make stim packs out of the vending machines. Clinic security terminal. Uh, nothing. Today's position that leads out to the medical district. Ooh, another stash. I almost missed that one. Nothing of value there. It's your own 
Uh, that's how you tell if it's uh, shielded or not. The lights. So if it's red, it's shielded. If it's blue, it's not shielded. Damn, just because it's at the end of the hall, red light means they're shielded. Must be a way to shut them off somewhere else. And of course, the light just says immediately what I just said. This usable looking auto dock still has a series of diodes and buttons that appear to work. You know what? Let's go for the heal. Ah, uh, so much better. Well, kinda. Uh, yeah, that's just to heal all crippled limbs. It doesn't actually heal you. Move, dog. Oh, please tell me this. Let's see. Excuse insomnia has. Insomnia seems to have gotten. Oh. Run for it. Woo -woo 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 -woo. Oh, dog. Dog! Oh, that was close. Alright, there needs to be a way I can shut off the, those um, speakers. Maybe something in the basement? There's something. It's a hard lock, so there's gotta be something of value down here. Possibly just a bunch of security holograms. Hello? Power system. Disengage main power. There we go. Now the power's down. We can finally get to Christine in that auto dock area. And also, we can check out the workbench. So, is there anything I can make? Um, eight ammo, miscellaneous co weapons. Weapons, definitely. Uh, we can make a clean cosmic knife. We can make a cosmic knife spear. I think the gas bomb we can make if I can find a center module and a pilot light. Uh, we can make a knife spear. Then we want to get that cosmic knife spear. We can also make a satchel charge time bomb. I remember we making a superheated cosmic knife, but I think I, that's for the... I think we need a clean version, and then we needed a... Uh, go to like one of the the like heater things. Pink gun, nothing. I can find a, a Brexo cleaner. I'm definitely gonna uh, cook up one of those uh, cosmic knives. All right. Well, with that said and done, let's head back to that wing. Not that wing this one because now that the speakers are off we can finally get to Christine I believe this is the right one nope pin, pin here conductor nope where would it be not in that one because that one's locked up anything here scrap metal nothing ah a malfunction on the dock and I hear banging which means Oh my god, it's terrifying! And it's also Christine. God, you're ter terrifying me. The woman before you looks disoriented pain. Disoriented pain that I couldn't read it because the text went by too fast. Are you alright? She looks at you with blanks again, opens her mouth, but nothing comes out. Touches her throat, then traces the scar beneath her chin, and her eyes widen in alarm. Alright, look, I'm here to help. She looks shaken. As she glances up at the auto dock, she recoils, and her mouth opens, but again, nothing comes out. She looks back at you, her hands clench into fists, her eyes narrow, and she takes a step back, studying you. Uh, this isn't what it looks like, trust me. The woman opens her mouth again, winces, then frowns, and drags a finger across her throat in slow motion. She looks more angry than pain now. Frowning, she touches her throat again, gently, then her hand brushes her collar, and then her frown deepens. Her eyes narrow as she traces the edge of her collar until she finds the lock and begins to press it with her fingers. It's a bomb collar. Don't mess with it, and it'll go off. She looks surprised, then notices your collar and raises an eyebrow. I feel like I'm reading like a fanfiction. Uh... Let's just say we're in this together. She frowns, narrows her eyes, and then slowly shakes her head. We 
need to cooperate if we're going to get out of here. She shakes her head again and draws a line in the air between the two of you. Look, together we can get out of this. She shakes her head once, then crosses her arms. Look, I'm not trying to order you, but your life is tied to mine. She frowns, glances at your collar, then back at you. She makes a circle with her hands, puts puts her hand over her eyes. She nods at you, then lowers her hand from her eyes, shakes her head, and draws a slow line between you. You look like you're looking for something else. I can help. She says you again, and their expression softens slightly, then shakes her head slowly and gives you a silent sigh. She nods at you, then raises an eyebrow and nods at the door. All right, come on. Christine glances at your follower, shakes her head, then points to her, nods in the direction of the fountain. Oh, with that. Oh. The speaker then glances at your collar, frowning. It's a decayed speaker. If we stay too long near one, it'll go off. She taps the collar and then opens and closes her hand really fast. She taps the collar, then opens her hand and closes her hand really fast. She points at your pit boy, her collar, and then your collar. After a second, she opens and closes her hand slower. You can interfere with the speaker's detonation frequency somehow? She's, she's about to nod, then stops and points herself and shakes her head. She points at your collar, then hers, then nods at your pit boy and makes a triangle motion. The same slow. Does that work with any other collar? She frowns and slowly shakes her head, opens her mouth, and makes a motion, turning the dial, then points at herself. So just your frequency. She nods once, then again, points to the two of you, and then the pit boy But only between us. She nods and motions for you to go ahead. Alright, well, we managed to get Christine on our side. And she's going that way. You know what? Part of me wants to go out into this part of the medical district. Part of me wants to follow her. What do you think, God? Hmm? If it isn't the clever one, what do you want? Personal space. That's what I want. We'll see. <laughs> clever use of words there. All right, let's just head out here and make our way back to the fountain. I think that's what we'll call a video. And who knows? Maybe dog will find... Oh, no way. I don't have dog with me. Um, uh, just a second. Uh, God, I, I need you to go back to sleep for a little bit. Go, dog. Dog, it would be so easy if you just eat it. Where did you go? Oh, there goes Christine. Um, okay. Oh, God, my health. You know what? I'll, I'll use a stim pack for this one. Also, junk food. Can't never say it's bad to eat junk food. Always yell at dog. Remember. Dog, can you just please eat someone so I can get your perk? Well, hopefully Christine made it back in one piece. I feel a storm brewing. A storm of destiny! Come on, come on, dog. I think he ripped his head off and ate it. Which is exactly what I was hoping for. Dog, 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 harvester, dog, harvester. Remember you. You were me. I watched you devour one of the ghost people. Dog doesn't like to eat them always. Sometimes so many. 
keep stabbing Dog, cutting him. Doesn't that make the voice mad? Voice doesn't get mad when Dog feeds on the people here. Voice not like ghost people. Worry there are too many to eat, too many knives. Started eating them because wouldn't go quiet when Dog smashed them with bear jaw. Only want one. Got Dog angry. Others kept cutting him and slicing him with knives when he tried to make one go quiet with teeth. So dogs started crushing them. Then when they stop twitching, then eats them. Then they not get back up with shunk noise. Dog not like that. Dog can tell when they not yet dead. Twitch a bit, make low noise. Then noise when they get back up. Listen. Do you need to eat them to make them stay down? No. If you rip their arms off or legs, mask people stay down. Easier to rip off legs and arms when they fall on ground. Just keep hitting them. If can't make them fall down and rip off legs, make them ash. Saw one caught in electric sparks so much he turned into burnt pile. Not get back up. So dismember it, dismemberment or disintegration take them down. Dis Disin Chop legs off while stand up. Eat when fall down. If not that, make them electric ash. Dog knows where to hit them. Make them stay down. Base of neck, lower back. Hit it hard enough. Life snaps out of them. Can you show me where? Dog can. See where back of collar is? Follow down to lower back. Hit neck, middle back, right on spine. Crack! Then they not get back up. Dog hits them, then dog eats them. Easier to make quiet twice that way. Dog has taught you the ghost hunter perk, allowing you to kill ghost people so they stay dead. Dead. And there we go. There is the perk I was actually trying to get out of dog. I think it actually has like a unique um, like icon for it. Uh, let's see. Uh, there. Uh, no, that's uh, there. It is Ghost Hunter. Uh, nope. It's just chainsaw, chainsaw and ghost people. All right, back to the villa. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, with that said and done, we've made a lot of progress for now. Uh, we got Christine, we got Dog, we got into this mess. Next time on Fallout New Vegas, we are going to head off to the next district in here in the villa and recruit, if I can get over to the quest, Dean Domino! Maybe he has some good pizza. Who knows? But until then, I will see you guys next time. Later!